Hey guys, today I'm going to show you five tips for Affinity Publisher. I hope they can improve your workflow in this software. So let's take a look on tip number one. Auto hypentation. That's something that you can just simply turn on and off. So after you paste your text to Publisher to your text frame, you may notice that you got strange gaps at the end of the, each line and the program is not breaking your word automatically. That's really easy to solve. So as you can see the text on the right, we got some words here that are break already. Let's do something similar to this text box. So click on the text box and then click on paragraph over here. You have all paragraph options here. And one of the options on this list is hypentation. Click on that and there is a checkbox you can turn on and off. Take a look. On and off. On and off. So that's really easy to apply if you want the Affinity Publisher to break your words at the end of each line. You can adjust that over here very precisely. Many options so you can even make some custom adjustments to this feature. All right, that was quick and easy. Let's move to tip number two. Here, I will tell you more about custom text frames. As you can see, I got very nice text around this picture on this side and also around this picture, same picture on the other side. You may see something similar in magazines, newspapers. So how we can do that? Normally, when you hover your mouse here, you got picture frame that's rectangle and the same for the text frame it's also rectangle so let me show you how you can do more custom text frame to maybe align it with the picture so i will delete them both and show you how i did that i will select pen tool over here and now let me just see my guides okay and now with this pen tool i will click and draw shape here and this is the area that I want to use to fill with text all right now this new area I can still make adjustments to it with no tool look like white cursor so I can move some points if I'm not happy with the position I can even make some notes more curvy all right so you can do that with the no tool, you don't need to draw the perfect shape in the first try. And now with this shape, I will right click on it and I can convert this shape to text frame. All right, now this is text frame. I can type inside, I can paste my text. Let's temporarily just fill it with filler text. So right click again and insert filler text. And here it is, we got text here. I'm going to draw something similar on the right side of this picture. So first pen tool, so I can make a custom shape for my text frame. Right click on this new custom shape and we can convert that to text frame. Now I will simply Connect this one with this one so the text will flow from this frame to this one. All right, and this is how I make these very custom frames around the pictures. As you can see, now those new text frames got this little white line. Let me zoom in. So we got this white line around. That's not what we need here, so I can click on it and then I can open text frame properties over here at the very top. As you can see, this text frame's got stroke by default, so we can change the stroke color from white to none. Same on this side, from white to none. And that's how we fix this little annoying stroke problem. As you can see, I got heart shape with text here, and this is even easier to do. I simply select hard shape from this long list of shapes, draw my shape, you can hold shift if you need a perfect heart. All right, 
and then with this shape I right click on it convert to text frame and then you can fill it with text as you want all right so that's how you can use any shape that you draw to be your text frame that was our tip number two let's move to the next page we are here tip number three text wrapping so as you can see here i got quite extreme example i got donut shape here with image inside and take a look on my text my text try to find a way around the shape around the shape so how can we do something like that let me show you all right my new object will be let's say circle like this and now it's covering the text that's not what we need we need to add some wrapping rules to this very object not to the text but to the object itself it's over here at the top take a look wrap settings and now I can make adjustments we got several options like jump square tight like this inside the, the shape in our case we don't have space inside and edge something I used before with the donut tool all right so in that case I can use tight option and you can even change the distance here if you like on the left so that's something you can adjust as well and now when i move this shape the text will try to flow around that so just keep in mind we apply wrapping settings to objects not to the text that's the general rule here all right that was our tip number three tip number four is all about pdf bookmarks Sometimes you open PDF document on your computer and there on the left you got this nice blue bookmarks that you can click and jump in exact place where you want to start reading the document. You don't need to scroll through 100 pages and search for the topic yourself. That's something we can do here in Affinity Publisher. We can set up bookmarks and then users will see them in the PDFs on the computers. All right, how to do that? We will need to open additional studio, additional panel. So let's go to view and then studio and course at the very top. All right. I already got two bookmarks in my document for advice number one and two. Let's add bookmark for text wrapping so I can just click on it and then I can click here new anchor and then we can give it a name as you can see it's anchor number three i can cancel that and we can simply select the text first and then click here so the text is copied here automatically i don't you type it myself and i can click ok and i can do the same with this guy okay and as you can see, I got four bookmarks already in my document. So if I export this to PDF, people will be able to click on bookmarks to jump to certain pages without scrolling all document up and down. Very handy for digital publishing. All right, that was our tip number four. Don't forget to add bookmarks to your long PDF documents. And the final tip is about custom picture frames we already did some custom text frames and we can do something very similar to picture frames as well so how i get this strange shape as my picture frame let me show you let me delete this one and we we'll try to recreate that so i will draw circle and then i will copy the circle so i can right click on the layer duplicate move it below and they still overlapping a little bit i can select them both in the same time right click geometry this way we can add both shapes together all right this is one shape now and by using node tool i can get rid of those nodes here in the center and have this nice shape all right i got my custom shape ready how can I put image inside? Easy. Right click and convert to picture frame. 
Now this is picture frame already. You can see it's changed on the layer panel on the right side is save picture frame. Look exactly the same. So <laughs> that's something you need to look on here. Name picture frame. Now I'm ready to drag and drop pictures here. I can go to stock panel and search for pictures. All right, let's pick this one and I can drag and drop inside my picture frame. And here it is. Now I can, of course, move the picture inside. In my case, I don't need to use this zoom bar because I got the perfect level, but you can adjust this by this zoom bar as well. All right, and you can, of course, click the whole object to move the whole frame as well, not only picture inside. All right, you saw before this shape got stroke around, so we can do it as well. If I click here, fx it stands for effects for this layer and we got several layer effects in my case i'm going to use outline all right we can change the color of this outline as well we can even pick the color existing color from the document like this and here it is so we got custom shape with additional layer effect I did exactly the same thing over here. I simply draw triangle first, take a look like this. Then I use this orange smart control at the very top to modify the shape first like this. Then I was ready to right click convert to picture frame. All right, as you can see, nothing changed visually. So you need to take a look here, picture frame in the layer panel. Now you are ready to drag and drop this picture inside this. All right, here it is, almost good. As you can see, this picture now is above our text, but we already learned how to solve this problem. So we're going to click here, wrapping settings, and we can make it tight like this. And on the right side, a little bit bigger, close, and the text is aligned to the shape as well. So everything match. All right, last question for this page. How did I do the picture with the overlay color? So the color is like on the top of the picture, so it's matching my main color of the document. This is very simple picture frame, basic one. I drag picture inside and then I click FX. So FX layer effects and there's effect called color overlay. You can turn it on and select any color you want. Let's change color to be green. Normally it's set up to normal. So you will have like color just covering the image. You cannot see the image below. So change the blending mode to color. This way you get perfect color overlay, but you can still see the texture, the image below. All right, guys, that's how you can add a color above your picture as well. So I hope those five tips are really handy for you and they will help you to increase your workflow in Affinity Publisher. It's great software. Give it a try. All right, guys, thank you for today. Keep in mind, I post two tutorials like this per week. So if you are into Affinity software like designer, photo publisher, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and I will see you in my next tutorial. Bye bye.